Hey Parasites, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to talk about issues 2, 3, and 4 of the recent Carnage series by Torin Gronbeck, and hopefully I'm saying her name right, um, as she's worked with Rom V previously, I think, on some of the setup for this run, and then she also did a couple issues of the Venom book that, you know, kind of introduced the Black Widow symbiote. So I was curious because the first issue we reviewed on here, and I'm going off the trade by the way, I picked up the trade paperback, for this Carnage run, and it had that web of Carnage number one in it, but then also the four, uh, first four issues of this current run. And since we already reviewed issue one, I was like, all right, I kind of like the setup. They have Carnage doing the cosmic god thing after the death of the Venomverse or whatever. Now he's back on our Earth, his original Earth, and he created like a another Cletus Cassidy using DNA that was inside the symbiote or whatever, and made like another younger Cletus Cassidy and has bonded to it. And now they are on this mission where they're going across the nation and killing different people who have biblical names and they're trying to send a message. And, uh, and it looks like that more of that plan is getting revealed in this book or the rest of these issues here, two through four. And I gotta be honest, like, I'm, I don't know what to think of this series. I, I'm honestly genuine. Like, I'm like, well, okay. I kind of like the concepts that are used in this book, but I feel like the execution I'm not liking at all. And the artwork I'm like 50, 50 on, I, I think the artist is, is good. But I just feel like some pages and some of the art, I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like they're, you know, when you're doing comics and the writer puts a lot of scenes where people are talking, I get that it's hard to make that visually interesting. But I feel like with characters that have symbiotes attached to them, it's a little bit easier to make them at least somewhat visually interesting. You could have the symbiote hanging out somewhere. You could do something visual. You can make a spooky background or something. And I don't see a lot of that in this. Although when you get these big splash page images where like a symbiote is like eating, you know, another Cletus Cassidy and stuff, I'm like, okay, that's cool. It looks really great. And the slobber is coming down. So there's like, the artist is good, but I just don't feel like consistent. Um, and I imagine that's because it's, it's hard to do. <laughs> it's hard to probably be that good and consistent on every page, but I just noticed it. So it just made me kind of feel like medium on the visuals and medium on the writing on this book. And I'm not going to go into too many details um, but I am going to skim through some of the spoiler story beats. So if you don't want any spoilers, I would say go read the book yourself and then come back, obviously, and give us your opinion down in the comments, because I am, I'm genuinely divided on this book. I don't think Marvel knows what to do with Carnage. I just, to be honest, like, you know, I just don't think they know what to do with this character. He's, you know, regular guy, then he's killed and then he's not killed and he's back and then he's not Cletus anymore and it's just a symbiote and then the symbiote's dead and, you know, and then now it's a god and, and it went through all that and, and Ron V's run and it became this big powerful thing and now it's like, okay, we want to go back to basics, so how do we take this god and still keep him kind of like a god but bring him back down to the ground level? What's the motivation? And I just feel like they're really trying here <laughs> to do something with this character and it seems like what they're ultimately going to do is just have him be part of the Venom story um, because I've already read the you know issues of Venom and stuff and, and uh, there's a crossover with Dylan with Carnage that takes place after this. So we'll get into all those. But for just issues two, three, and four here, again, I want to hear your opinions down below. If you agree, disagree, or whatever, I'd love to hear them because I don't know. I was trying to look for other people online really talking about this. And I also, the few people I saw were mixed reactions as well. And I was like, man, that's crazy. That's kind of how I feel. Like, I just feel like they don't know what they're doing with this character or they have an idea, but it's just hard to pull off considering what they've done recently with the character. And so what's happening in this is that there's a, like I said, after issue one, you have a younger type Cletus that was created from the symbiote and the two of them are working together to kill people across you know, America that have biblical names like Mark, you know, stuff like that, like anything that ties to the Bible in a way. But then what they're also doing, it reveals in this that they're kind of framing Flash Thompson at the same time. Now, Flash Thompson was someone who died and is back now and hasn't really fully reconnected with the world because when he came back, he went to the Savage Vendors and now he's back in the present. And he gets this sense that Carnage is out there doing bad things. And it's funny that he's getting it, but like, you know, Eddie is not really, you know, his finger's not on the pulse of this or Dylan, although I guess that's what the address in the crossover, so we'll get there. But at least here, Flash is like, all right, something's going on. I think Cletus is back. I think Carnage is back. Meanwhile, there's never been a time recently where Carnage or a Cletus was on Earth, because obviously we had the human-ish Cletus that was going around with that cop for a while. And so you have a version of him still on Earth that uh, the new younger Cletus is looking for. And when he finds him, he like eats him and devours him so they can all become one 
thing again. So I could see, all right, we got to clean up that plot thread of too many Klebuses. So they kind of do address that in this. And they have, like I said, that great shot of a carnage eating an older Cletus Cassidy, which is a cool shot. And it's a cool like concept. Um, and visually it looks great, but I just still, I was like, I'm divided. Like, I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I mean, it just feels like I'm cleaning up. Like that's what this book feels like. And, and it's like, but it's still trying to progress a story, but then really I don't, I mean, I, I get it, but I don't care is I guess is my more accurate statement is like I get what Torin's doing and what Marvel's doing with this character to an extent like I understand that they're cleaning up things and they're trying to simplify it and just make a, a singular villain um a singular carnage again but it just I don't care I guess like I, I feel so detached whenever it's like oh this isn't the original Cletus because he died and so we have to recreate a Cletus out of DNA and I'm just like okay then to me it doesn't there, you can't sell me on it that being the original Cletus, I guess. Uh, I look at it like a clone or, or you know, a copy of some kind. Uh, it's just like, all right, they're they're an entity of their own, but that's it, they're, they're their own thing. And I feel like some of the past stories now that led to this don't matter as much because you're getting a clean slate. Um, and, you know, I don't know. That's just kind of how I felt about this. Uh, it, so you let me know if you feel differently. <laughs> so you have Flash that's on the case though and he's working with Liz Allen and they're trying to figure out where Cletus is going to strike next and she has to kind of break some rules and use her company's assets to, and government contacts to kind of help Flash although she doesn't reveal that she has a symbiote like she doesn't reveal that you know that's going on with her and Flash I feel like there was a scene where they kind of nod he might sense something from her but they don't go past that so it just feels like convenient writing too where they're like you know Liz can just be like hey if you're going to go fight Carnage and you need symbiotes like I'll come with you as a friend um, or something. You know, I don't know. I feel like she could have gotten involved in more more ways than just providing information for Flash. And then all that did was just put Flash on the FBI's radar um, in a way. And I'm like, oh, okay, what? So, so that just helps Cletus's plan to frame Flash. Like, and how could Cletus have foreseen that to possibly be a thing? So uh, unless he just... Yeah, I don't know. Like, it, it, it kind of feels like a little all over the place. Like, I, I get it's linear in a way, but it's also like, I guess, like I said, I just don't care. And, I, and I, this is not the story I was hoping for Flash's return is like, okay, he's going to go after Carnage. But he does, but he gets beaten. Um, you know, the anti-symbiote that he has on doesn't actually hurt Cletus anymore because he's like, hey, I've evolved. I've absorbed the other Cletus. I'm now Cletus Carnage again, you know, and they're trying to make him that, but he's still kind of godlike. And he's now tapped into the anti-venom symbiote and knows what it, you know, what it can do and felt it before. So now it doesn't burn him away. So he's able to counteract it and he uses the suit to trap Flash in his own mind. And then is like, okay, well, now that you're out of the way and that plan is done, I'm going to go look for Venom. And I just learned through you that Venom is actually Dylan Brock right now and not Eddie. And so I need to go find Dylan so I can find Eddie. And that's basically setting up this uh, necrotian, you know, symbiosis, whatever crossover that goes between the Venom and Carnage books for a couple issues. So we'll talk about that coming up. I first want to talk about Venom number 30 first. Um, and then once we talk about issue 30, then we'll get into the crossover. But for now, for Carnage 2 through 4, like, I'm I'm just kind of in the middle. Like, I feel like indifferent where I, I, I kind of like some of the concepts. So I guess that's not indifference. I do like them. But then some of the execution I don't like. So it just kind of puts me in this middle road where I, I feel like I'm not adding anything interesting really to an extent on my commentary on this because I'm like, well, I do like this beat. I like this beat. And I like the concept of doing a, a murder mystery story with Cletus where he's taking out people and it's biblical and he picks up this hitchhiker and, and kills him. He finds out the guy's name is like, you know, Mark or something like that, or just like a biblical name. And he, ta and he takes that and kills that guy and, and makes him the next victim. So it's kind of like random and by chance and circumstance that he gets some of his victims. But it's like, okay, I'm, is, now is that plan done? Now that he's going to go look for Dylan and look for Eddie, is is that whole Bible thing and setting up Flash, is that like, was that just to get the police off his trail? Because the police didn't really even know Carnage was fully back yet. <laughs> so he could have just laid low and done nothing. And uh, But I guess he wanted to keep other heroes from chasing him down. But then he made such short work of Flash that I'm like, well, why did he need to, does he really need to kill all these other people to lure Flash out and then beat Flash? Like he could have just went to Flash's apartment and taken him out, um, you know, if the anti-symbiote didn't hurt him. So 
I don't know. I just one of those things where I, I just I feel like the, it was it's like overwriting where it's like, you know, Carnage is like a blunt object. If he wants something, he'll just go get it. And yeah, maybe sometimes he'll play games and maybe sometimes he just wants chaos. And so he goes and does that. So I, all that feeds into what Torin and, and Marvel's doing with this character in this book. But it also, some of it just feels like, oh man, I got like four pages of Flash just talking to, you know, someone at a bar and then talking to Liz Allen. And I'm just like, these are interesting characters to just have them talk like this. Like they, there's way more to them than this, you know, and they don't have to talk in their civilian clothes. Flash can be swinging around the city and taking down like a random thug while he's talking to Liz, like multitasking. And, and Liz can be like, trying to keep her symbiote from coming out while she's talking to Flash. Like you can do interesting things with these characters while they're having these conversations um, that will give the artist something more to draw or something more to do that just makes the page have a little bit more life in it. And I just feel like there's all these opportunities for that in this book and no one's taking them. So for me, I'm just kind of like, man, I don't hate the book. I don't love it though. I'm just kind of like, it feels like it exists to clean up some past threads so that they can put carnage in a spot they need him in for this dylan crossover and then for whatever al ewing's doing in his book if he's going to use carnage as well um in venom war or not like we'll, we'll see how that plays out as we talk about the next few issues but that's just my thoughts on this like it just feels like one of those stories like a, an editor corporate kind of thing where they're like we need to get carnage from point a to point b and you're the writer to do it and i know like firsthand how difficult that can be to go huh, okay let's let's work it out and i would say torin's doing a great job of like the best job she could with what was handed to her i feel um and so here we are now the book ends where flash is taken down pretty easily like i said by carnage and now carnage is going to go off and look for dylan so he can find eddie from there um so yeah and then when we talk about issue 30 you will see because it's that issue takes place after the Dylan crossover. So then we're going to be, you know, backtracking back and forth like we were doing recently with issue 25 up to 29 and stuff where there's like jumping around in the timeline. But uh, we'll we'll try to make it all make sense in the next episode. So let me know what you think of Carnage 2 through 4. Like I said, the trade's out now if you want to buy it. Um, I think the digital version was like eight bucks or something, which is a, a really great price for four regular comics and the one web of Carnage one shot at the beginning. So that'll completely catch you up on everything that's going on with Carnage right now. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you go buy it and read it, let me know your comments down below and we can keep talking down there and about more events and spoilers and moments in it. And if there's something you saw or you know gleaned from this or interpreted differently than maybe what I'm saying, I'd love to hear that too because I feel like there's talent on the book. I'm just like, I, I just am in the, I'm surprised I'm in the middle of the road on how I feel about it. Um, so that's why I'd love to hear from more people too. And maybe it'll get my wheels working a little bit more. We can do an update video later on. Um, but let me know what you think, like I said, and we'll keep talking in the comments. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.